Yo, Elliot, how do I balance my wife feeling seen by me versus working from home? Anytime my business is growing and I'm executing and saying no to everything, I do well. I have had $60,000 of contracted revenue in a month. However, I quickly fall off for not doing the uncomfortable, like prospecting and selling and marketing. Rather, I want to be in my zone of learning and intellectual work and innovation and competing by the standards that I evaluate myself the most on, my mastery. I feel as if I lose my warrior when I'm too warm and too attentive to my wife and my son during the day. I need isolation to be that version of myself at that time. I keep falling for not being rigorous enough in what I tolerate. Is there any rules I can follow on how to handle this? So what I, in a way, what I hear you saying, and it's a struggle that I've had, and it's something that I, you know, I'd like to talk to you about, is balancing your alpha and your beta, right? So the alpha male quality within us wants us to work, wants us to build, wants us to grind, wants us to achieve status, achieve wealth, right? To, to strive and struggle and work, right? That's what like get, that's what men are built for. That's why we have testosterone, right? Women don't have testosterone that way, but they can train themselves to behave that way. But it's in our nature to be that way, but it's only one side of the equation, right? Because what is it all for? Like what does is, what is, uh, James Brown say? It's a man's world. It's a man's world, but it would be nothing. Not one little thing without a woman part of it. <laughs> He's right. It's a man's world. It's alpha male's alpha male man's world. We build it all. We make it all. We do it all. We are the kings, right? That's what we do. But guess what? Why do we do it? Why do we do it? Why do we do it? Because it would be nothing. Not one little thing without a woman part of it, right? And so. What makes it such that a woman will want to be a part of it? Well, after you do all that work, after you building all that stuff, all, you, all that time you gunning and grinding and working and putting your head down, what do you want to do? You want to take a shower, wash off, put on something nice, come home and enjoy your wife, enjoy your children, enjoy your life, right? And that, and I think it's important for us now to talk about the, the necessity for the beta male qualities within us. Like I said earlier today, of course I talk a lot about alpha male qualities because they're, they're lacking. Alpha male qualities are lacking in our society. It just, it just is and it's a shame and that's why it seems as if Elliot is hyper-focused on masculinity and alpha, alpha stuff, right? I am because that's what is needed. But do you think I would have a successful 30 year relationship for children and, and, and a wife that still adores me. If I wasn't a little beta, you got to be a little beta. You got to know when to shut off the hard grind and come home and chill and be available and be present and help out. Right. The ladies like when you're there for them and you give them a little bit of attention, right? Buy them nice things, do nice things, say nice things. Be soft in a way, but never lose your hardness. Be soft. Notice what I said there. Be soft. Be tender, aggressive. Tender, aggressive. That's my catchphrase for that. I made that up. Tender, aggressive. You got to be a little tender and you got to be aggressive. You got to maintain both. You got to be able to do both. Now, how do you do that, right? Remember earlier I spoke about seasons? And that there are going to be seasons of grinding and there are going to be seasons of winding down. It's just inevitable. Here's a macro season for you. When you're in your 20s, maybe until your early 30s, right? Depending on your situation, what you're doing. You got to grind. You got to work. You got to put your time in. You got to put your energy in. You got to put your focus in. And you have to have a woman that understands that. And the best way to keep her off your back, to keep her from needing you and wanting you and, oh, my, I miss you, is to give her babies. And I just say that from my experience. Man, when I was in my 20s, I, I, was, I was hustling. I was working. I was working hard. I was working from, I would go to the gym at, at 5 
twenty in the morning, right? Five twenty, because I'd be there by five for th- five thirty class, and I get home till like nine o'clock sometimes. I would come home maybe for an hour for lunch, and I would basically take a nap on the couch, and then I go right back out. I was either working on the internet or I was working in the gym all day, all day long. And you know what Colleen was doing? She was carrying babies. She was nursing babies. She was chasing after babies. When I would come home, she would have the house nice. So she was serving, she was serving me and serving her children. She was not a bored woman. And a, and a woman who's not bored is not needy. If your woman is being needy, it's because she's bored, right? And if a woman's bored, she needs a baby, right? <laughs> Keep her occupied. Or give her work to do, right? Hey, I need an assistant. Give her a job. So that season of my life was purely grind and go. Purely. By mid-30s, I started to crack up because I didn't know what to do with myself. Because I didn't need to work so much. And my wife and the kids were kind of like grown. And so a new season began for me. And dare I say, Uncle E grew a little bit softer. I'm much softer. I'm much softer than I was when I was 27, right? I got more time with my wife. I'm with her all day, every day, and we enjoy each other's presence. I enjoy being near my wife. I sit here at my desk, and she's over there at her desk, right? I could talk to her. She could talk to me. We could look at each other. If I need something, I could ask her. We're in each other's space all day long, and it's great. I love it. I love being that beta male provider for her, in this season of my life, right? I can soften up and I can, you know, I I have that luxury now. So that's the macro season, right? The macro season is if you're in your 20s and you're just building your business and you're making 60 grand a month, you want to keep that going. Keep that momentum. And explain to your wife, if she's having a hard time, that we need to make babies. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know, man, because I don't know other, any other. I can only sp- speak based on my experience. I don't know any other way to satisfy a woman than to fill her up. That's really what a woman wants more than anything is to be filled to the brim. She want to be filled up so much that she pops. Boom. Rah, rah, babies. Right. Otherwise, she's going to feel empty. And if she's hoping you're going to fill her up. With sterile sex. <laughs> right then you're going to, it's, it's not, it's not going to happen. It's not going to, it's not going to work. And if you're not ready to make babies, maybe she needs a kitten or something. I don't know, a dog, but she needs, she needs, she needs something that's going to keep her occupied while you're doing what you got to do. And I think babies are the best way. Uh, so those are, those are seasons. Those are macro seasons. Now, oh, you got a six month old son. Good. Okay. So maybe it's your own guilt. Cause I, I'm sure she got her hands full. I'm sure she's got her hands full with a sick month old. So don't let that guilt you too much because that's another thing too. Maybe it's not her, but it's you. The culture has us believing as men that we need to be giving mommy love. The culture has lied, lied to us. Even with your children, bro, uh, your six month old doesn't need you. I don't know if that's a shock to your ego or that's some sort of a like a mind fuck. But our children really don't need us as fathers until, you know, they start reaching up into that teenage, those teenage years. It's good that your six month old, you don't, you don't need to be around your six month old. You're, that's what a, your, your wife is for. That's what your, her, his mother is for. You're there to build the frame for them. I'm making money so I could buy a house and I could put food on the table. Once the kid starts getting around teenage years, you know, 10, 11, 12, whatever, that's when he's really going to look up and like, where's my dad? Right? He's going to want to know where his dad is. If your presence is known, that's all that's needed. That's really all that's needed. You just need to know, oh, my dad's here. Dad's coming home. There's daddy. Right? He needs to be able to point and say, there's daddy. And more than anything, your child's uh, relationship with, with you will mirror your wife's relationship with you. So he needs to know mommy loves daddy. That's so important. Not that daddy's always here changing my diapy, feeding my bottle, right? That, that's not necessary. But he needs to know mommy loves daddy, daddy loves mommy, right? That's, that's really what the children need at that point. They need to know that they live in a stable home, that there's two parents and that they love each other, right? And if you can, you can manage that, you're doing all that you need to do for your children at that stage, at this time, at this season. 
So, of course, that's, we're talking big, right? We're talking macro cycles. Micro cycle, let's talk about the day, just the day, the day in and of itself. There should be times that you create boundaries for work and boundaries for intimacy. Intimacy boundaries, put them in boundaries. So, for example, I went, we went to a workshop this weekend. It was about, you know, Christian families and stuff like that. My kids wanted to go. And we listened to a couple seminars, and there was one couple, you know, they didn't give, tell us anything enlightening, but I like the way they put it. She said they got couch time. The husband and wife, they have couch time. That means every single day, no matter what, they drop what they're doing for 30 minutes, and they sit on the couch, and they talk. And you're not allowed to get up off the couch within those 30 minutes. I owe it to you. You owe it to me. Give her couch time, right? Give her that couch time, right? If, she's, if you and she are wanting physical intimacy, make it bedtime, right? Bed, bedtime. Better down at bedtime, right? Just make it a, a daily ritual, right? You know, we, before bed, we put down the baby, we go shower, and we get naked, right? And it's every day, right? And if you're semen retaining, you can do it every day. Every day, we got our, our one hour, right? Our one hour, where we're just, we're into each other, or you're into her. Right. So that's a that's sort of a daily thing. Or you could do it in the morning time. Right. In the morning time before you got out of bed, before my wife and I get out of bed in the morning, we snuggle. Right. Meaning like we hug each other and rub each other and kiss and then I rub her head and then we get up and go, go about our day. But it's that little oxytocin release that keeps that bond tight. Right. We in bed together. We snuggling together. We'll be warm together. We'll be affectionate with one another that carries through the day. And if you're, li if you're working at home, you don't need to give her all your attention. If you gave her that little bit in the morning and then just periodically throughout the day, just touch her butt, <laughs> right? Give her a little kiss on her neck. Just a little, just a little periodic throughout the day. By the time the evening come, she ready for you, right? That's just little things that you could do throughout the day. You were talking micro cycles. So there's the macro cycle. There's going to be times in your life where you're, you're working and you're going to be distant and there going to be times in your life where you're together. And think about this. Till death to us part is my perspective when it comes to marriage, right? So I know that a lot of people, they, it's a hard thing for them to consider, but I can't wait to be old with my wife. When we old, when we old and we have grandkids, I look forward to that. I don't know if I'm trying to rush things. I'm not trying to rush it, but I'm like, I think about that. I'm like, wow, it's going to be nice. Me and his old lady she don't like that i call her that my old lady me and my old lady she gonna be an old lady a legit old lady my old lady gonna be an old lady and i can't wait till my old lady the old lady and we just gonna spend all, all our time together right but back in the 20s she ain't never saw me and it was okay <laughs> anyway man i hope that helps you dude uh i don't think you're gonna lose your warrior if you spend a little bit of couch time with your wife um and then also Remember, this might just be the season where you got to do a little bit of beta and a whole lot of alpha. And there are going to be times we're going to be more beta and a little less alpha. Either way, you got to stay tender aggressive, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.